This is my Nixie thermometer project and unfortunately one of the tubes has blown. Uh, so this tube towards the right has gone gassy. In essence a small crack has developed and the neon has rushed out and it's been filled with air. And so uh, the gas inside no longer ionizes and the digits uh, no longer light up. The other three tubes here are still going strong but this guy to the right has gone bad and if we take a look here this tube was made in looks like the fifth month of 1977 so you know not a bad innings uh, shame that it's uh, gone bad but uh, we'll swap it in and see if that fixes the problem now these top circuit boards here are built like this and uh, the idea here is to use a, a simple trick in order to make changing these tubes easier. It's just one of those inevitable things that some Nixie tubes are going to fail. So what I've done is instead of soldering the Nixie tube directly to a through hole solder pad like this, I've instead soldered or created these pads all around the outside that the uh, Nixie tube wires can be soldered to in a kind of surface mount fashion. So that should mean that I can just clip the leads at each of these positions and the Nixie tube will drop out. There'll be no solder in any of these through hole connections and uh, we'll then be able to remove the clipped leads from the outside here and easily replace the Nixie tube with a new one. So that's the idea in principle. Basically uh, the thought is that it's really really hard when you've got one of these through plated holes to clean out all the solder from it. So even if you've got solder wick like this or a solder sucker like this, if you've got a through plated hole it's just really difficult uh, to remove all the solder from the hole make it the same size as it was and allow uh, a new lead to be inserted through it. So um, yeah, hopefully this approach of having these kind of surface mount pads around the outside like this will greatly simplify the process of subbing out that tube and putting in a known good tube. Okay, so that's the uh, top of the plastic enclosure that's come off now and uh, just four screws and four six millimeter spaces like this uh, are what hold that uh, top of the enclosure on. So I just need to undo four more screws and then I'll be able to get these top boards off. This is just socketed at one point here that joins the bottom boards to the top boards. So I'm going to pull these top boards off or gently remove them. And so uh, this one to the right here was our suspect Nixie tube. And you can see what I've done. Little wire bent over coming out of the tube and hooked to or soldered to each one of these flat pads. So I'm just going to go and cut each of these wires now and remove the tube. Okay, so I think that's all the wires clipped. So with any luck be possible to gently manoeuvre this particular tube 
out. Might have to just use a pair of pliers to uh, gently bend those pins or even uh, a little screwdriver. Let's see if that comes out a bit easier now. There we go. So we've got the tube removed here. I'll just have to give all these pads a bit of a clean up, remove the remnants of the the wires here and maybe even just apply a bit of flux and uh, some desoldering braid just to clean up those pads ready for the new mixy tube to be added. A device like this comes in uh, really handy for clipping PCBs, holding them fast while doing some soldering or desoldering in this case. Just wait for my soldering iron to come up to temperature. Yeah, it's getting there. Give the tip a bit of a clean. Okay, that's looking good. And um, let's see if I can just remove some of these bits of wire initially. Try and kind of lift them off with the soldering iron. Help the solder and see if I can move the, the bit of wire to the side, like so. Off the pad, so that should leave not much more than solder on the pad. And as I'm doing this, I'm just being careful not to get solder into the, the little hole where the new lead is going to have to pass through because that of course would defeat the purpose of, uh, of going to the extra effort of adding these additional pads that surround the actual through holes. So I've almost gone right around, almost removed all the old leads and proved not too, not too tricky in the end and I might actually leave the solder on the pads ready and waiting for the replacement mixy tube and uh, I'll throw a bit of flux on there as well. That'll just help that solder to, to flow over the mixy tube wires. So here's my replacement mixy tube, and before I solder it in, it makes sense to give it a test. Uh, so what I've got here is a power supply that puts out about 200 volts. It actually is driven by a 12 volt switch mode regulator, uh, and then it's boosted back up to a couple of hundred volts at really quite a, a modest amount of current, a low amount of current, maybe 10 milliamps or so. Uh, and then I've got this yellow test lead here. It's connected to the positive output of my power supply and uh, built into the test leader here is, is a uh, resistor, might be a uh, 33k resistor or something similar just to limit the current going to uh, the Nixie tube. And I've got that connected to the lead here that uh, connects to this little ceramic part here. So usually the, the positive side, uh, the anode, is uh, reasonably easy to locate on the Nixie tubes because there'll be uh, some kind of ceramic indication like this that, that shows that uh, it is the anode and then all the cathodes will not have that. So now if we hook up uh, one of the cathodes at random to the, the negative connection to the power supply, we should see a Nixie light up. I've got to pick a valid one, and uh, there's the percent symbol. So that's, of course, of interest to us with this uh, temperature sensor. 
and humidity uh, weather station kind of display that I've got going uh, because this will show us this will be useful for indicating humidity so uh, relative humidity is expressed as a percentage and uh, if we try another one of these connections there is our degree symbol so nice and crisp and clear uh, no indication that there's any issues at all with that tube so we can go ahead and install it into our circuit board now what I find easiest to do when doing that is to actually start with the anode and make sure that that's correctly positioned where it needs to go on the circuit board and just work around feeding these leads in but what can also help is to uh, clip each one of these leads so that they're slightly shorter than the previous one and that just means that you know as you get one inserted into the circuit board the next one can push through and as you push it through there's less likelihood of pulling out the the leads uh, that you've already inserted so I'm going to do that now I'm going to cut off maybe um, you know four millimeters or so uh, from each of these and uh, I'll be right back okay so I've done that now I've kind of pruned back the leads uh, such that the longest lead here is my anode and then as we go around each side each lead gets shorter and I'm just going to start to insert that into the circuit board starting with that anode lead and then progressively through the shorter leads this can be pretty fiddly and time-taking uh, but we'll see how we go tonight but um, just before I do that I'm going to get rid of my high voltage power supply here just so that I don't accidentally touch this anode lead and give myself a little bit of a shock in the process As I said, this can be a bit fiddly, but here we are at about the halfway mark, and uh, I've just been progressively feeding leads through. Sometimes it can help to just sort of bend them back a little bit like this on the circuit board, just to minimise the chances that they're going to slip through again. Sometimes just using a pair of pliers like this to uh, grab a wire and bend it and, and poke it through can can help with the process a bit. Okay, success. I've got um, every wire here through uh, the correct hole and now it's just kind of a matter of cajoling the Nixie down into the position where uh, the base fits flush with the circuit board. This can be uh, a little bit fiddly and I urge you to take your time just to make sure that you don't put stresses on the glass here where the wire meets the glass. So if you bend the wires too much there's a chance you could stress the glass at that joint and, uh, and damage the tube. The other thing you want to do is just make sure you're kind of driving it down such that the um, display is nicely aligned with the front of the PCB so you don't have this kind of skewed off to the side or, or some such. Um, at this point too it's probably worth just checking that the anode connection matches up with uh, where you've got the anode connected on your circuit board uh, because of course if you're out of alignment now well you're about to commit to soldering it in which uh, which will be a pain to have to cut it out and, uh, and realign it. So I'm going to continue to carefully work that down and uh, once that's done uh, it'll be possible to bend these leads out, cut them a little shorter and start to get them soldered into place and our repair job will be done. So I've got my replacement Nixie tube positioned and now I'm going to bend these leads down carefully and uh, tack a few into place on the solder pads and uh, if the alignment still looks good then I shall solder the rest of these down. I've got uh, three of the leads tacked down. The alignment still seems pretty good here. These tubes are, you know, they're, they're manufactured with the precision of their time, I guess, and some are different diameters, some are uh, wonky shapes and such like, so 
they never really sit precisely parallel, um, but that's part of their charm. So very much a uh, kind of technology where you try and get it close, as close to a line as possible, but they're not going to be uh, necessarily perfectly aligned. All right, I'm going to go through now and having tacked those three down, I'm going to bend these over, clip them to length and uh, solder the rest of the wires. That's got the remaining wires soldered down there, tacked down there to the flat pads. Uh, so I think there's nothing for it but to give this a test and see if it works. So I'll just plug it into the bottom board and fire it up. Okay, so does it work? Let's take a look. Yes, happy times. It looks like we've got a bit of flicker there. That's not actually uh, apparent to the naked eye, but it's been caused by the strobing effects of the camera shutter speed and uh, the multiplexing that's happening to these Nixie displays. But uh, I call that a successful repair job and uh, a good demonstration of how to replace a Nixie tube and uh, a technique that you might like to apply when designing circuit boards for your Nixie tubes, which looks to work um, really quite well, namely adding little flat pads like this uh, around the through holes that the Nixie tube wires feed through. Anyway, if you found that uh, helpful or at least informative, please uh, like, comment and subscribe. And thanks for watching.